Fraser Island. A four-wheel drive paradise. One of my favourite four-wheel drive destinations that I've ever been to. Absolutely stunning. Breathtaking camping, wild fishing. It's a pack of dingoes here, dead turtle carcass. And unbeatable off-roading. Vehicle after vehicle bogged. We've got about seven snap traps in a row. Jesse, you can't park here, mate. Pretty hard to go wrong when you're in paradise. But sometimes it doesn't always go to plan. You'd be better off doing a transmission or an engine if you wanted to get a car out of the bush. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Right now, I'm on my favourite place in Australia. I'm on Fraser Island, just aired down, just got onto the beach. I'm in the big 200 at the moment, and this is the ultimate touring weapon. I can't wait to show you around when we get to camp, because I've done a couple of cool mods to it. All the boys already up the beach. I've given them a GPS waypoint up just north of Yurong, where they're supposed to meet me. Got a real basic plan for this one. I'm gonna show them my favorite weekend at Fraser. So we're gonna tick all the boxes for this one, and probably a few you've never heard of. Plus, we've got something very special lined up at the end. And if my eyes aren't telling me lies, just up ahead, that's where they all are. I can see the red arc truck first. Here he is. Hey, Roy's. Hey, hey, hey. Tour guide, Sean, you made it. I finally made it. I'm glad you boys can make it. I hope you're in for a good time. I've got some wild things planned and some, um, some firsts for me as well. Oh, super so, key, that sounds good. I'm very excited to show you guys around. I reckon, look, I've left the car running. I'm gonna get straight into it. Follow for a good time. Right, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> When you've been to Gari or Fraser Island before, you'll know just how good that feeling is seeing your mates on the island and hitting the soft sand. The shoes come off and you know the adventure is about to begin. It truly is a full driver's paradise. Oh yeah, nice and soft boys. Yeah, you're gonna need to get into that one. Here we go. Indian head, the mighty D-Max. We've got a good crew to do it with. Justin from Full Wheel Drive Detail in the Mighty Defender, looking as mean as ever on the beach. Behind him, a familiar face, Liam in the big steady rig. Woo. Next up is our good mate Tony from GME, who brought his iconic 80 series. And last but certainly not least, Steve in the Red Arc Hilux, carrying all the 12 volt gear we'll ever need on the island. Well, I can tell already the boys are pretty pumped for a Fraser adventure. I don't blame them. We've got picturesque scenes right now. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It hasn't been raining on Fraser for a long time. I can just tell already that the beach is powdery soft. So we'll have a work cut out. The island has seen very little rain lately, which in turn dries out the sand, making it extremely soft. Couple that with the 30 plus degrees days and it makes it about 10 times worse. It's pretty soft. It looks a little bit powdery. If I could pick one campsite in Australia to camp at for the rest of my life, I'd probably have to choose Sandy Cape, the most northern spot you can reach by four-wheel drive on Gary or Fraser Island. So naturally, the mission today is to get there and show these Fraser first-timers what it's all about. But between us and Sandy Cape lies the toughest challenge on Fraser. This is the infamous Nagala Rocks. Now, what you see here is a real tight patch you've got to get through. And then it really steps up here, quite boggy, as you can see. It's been chewed out this week, and um, a few of the boys have just been stuck up here. Something tells me the sand is a little bit soft. Um, a few of them were towing boats up there, and apparently they were stuck for about two hours. So we're gonna get up through there. There's max tracks all over. The boys are up there trying to recover vehicles. This is probably one of the tougher challenges on Fraser Island. Well, it's absolute chaos here at Nagala today. There's been vehicle after vehicle bogged. We've got one bogged in front of us. He's been hung up on his leaf spring, I think, in this um, little water hole right here before he's even got to Ningala. So it's gonna give him a little winch back on the run, but, and um, shouldn't be too much of a drama to get him back. Then he's gonna give it a little bit more poke, I reckon, to get through. It's all going on here, and the best thing about it, there is people absolutely everywhere. So if you get bogged, <laughs> chances are you're gonna make it on the internet somewhere. With the big Land Cruiser in front, out of the way, it's time for the 200 to work its magic. All right, let's get into it, eh? Oh, she's soft, all right. Up we go. Wow, that's 
amount of softage you're getting in Gala Rocks. Ooh, I nearly, nearly spoke too soon here. We're at full revs in the big 200, full revs. There we are, a little bit of traction, I don't have to concentrate here. I was uh, quietly confident going into it, about halfway up I started uh, getting that little, sort of uh, sheepish look in my face, I thought I was going to get stuck for sure. Yeah, you slowed down a bit on the hill, but it sounded good and you powered through. Yeah, you want to hold that one boys, and when you think you're done, keep into it, because you're not done, it's soft the whole way up. I won't lie, the 200 has a bit more power than the D-Max, but with Jesse behind the wheel, anything's possible. Come on mate. So far, so good. Jesse's made it up the first climb out of the rocks and he's onto the soft stuff. But he's put his foot down to get into it and the smaller tyres on the D-Max means he's gone shazzy deep. self saying got me. These IFS rigs are lower slung with smaller tyres. Now this lack of clearance means as you're trying to make momentum, you're actually bellying out on the underside of the vehicle, which kills all that momentum and makes the drive so much harder. Far out, eh? Jesse. Sure do. You can't park here, mate. You can't park here. Now there are a couple of options here to get unstuck, but the best chance I reckon will be with some Max Tracks. If I bring the 200 back down to give him a tow, I'll run the risk of both of us getting stuck and going back really isn't an option with this soft sand. We've got the Max Tracks under all the tyres. We're trying to dig it out best we could, but it's so soft that as soon as you dig one bit out, sand just falls in. So hopefully he can get going and we might have to do this a couple of times up the hill to get him up there. These don't weigh much, do they? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's worked a treat for about 20 metres. Oh, no. Just dragging the diff and that spare tyre underneath the whole way. Oh, Jesse, he's really anxious to get off this hill. When you get bogged in the gala, like, don't keep spinning. You just dig yourself deeper. It's actually harder for the recovery. Let's, let's go. It's hard to tell from the cameras here, but aside from the soft stuff, this part of Nagala is on an incline, meaning you've got to trawl your way through the soft stuff uphill. So, it's rinse and repeat. You've got to stay into it because Nagala just does not give up. You think you're there and you go, ha ha, you celebrate, and then you go, boy. Thanks boys, I couldn't have done it without ya. Whatever you do, don't celebrate early. Keep going. I think he's just celebrating early. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I might need your help up here again, boys. <laughs> He's bogged, I told him. I reckon Max Tracks will probably help more people at this particular patch of sand than just about any other recovery form. Now, we could get the 200 back, but the problem is, you gotta try and reverse all the way from there, it's not gonna happen, but if you come forward, there's nowhere to turn around. And you don't wanna risk getting two vehicles stuck on here as well, so this is definitely the best option. Sometimes it's gonna take a little bit of time, multiple times, but guess what, every time he's doing it, he's making another 100 meters. Okay, when are you ready, Jesse? All right, third time's a charm. Go, 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 You might have this. You might have this. Hey! Woo. I bet you he doesn't celebrate this time until he's actually down on the salt water. That was monumental. Soft as I've seen it for a while. All right, Justin's up next. He's seen how soft this sand is. He's gonna give it absolutely everything. And he's also put his tires down to about 10 PSI. And I recommend that, to be honest with you. Get them down nice and low before you try an Ingala, especially if it hasn't rained in a while. Here he goes, he's not going to be hanging around. There he goes, there he goes. Listen to that defender roar. That smile says it all. Stay into it, mate. Up you go. That was a ripper drive, mate. Well done. Liam, you've seen how it's done? All right, through the water, nice and tight, big girl. All right, gas, go, 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 go. Come on, big girl. Come on! Woo! That 200 is on song. Nice one, mate. You're through in style. Yeah, that front wheel's off the ground. He didn't want to get stuck, you can tell that. Big VDJ on song, sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Now, this is gonna sound super good. Big FTE, 300 horsepower in his 80 series. I can't wait to see this. There he goes. Oh. Well, Tony certainly 
Riley wasn't hanging around. Nice one, mate. You gotta go sideways around that corner if he catches that, right? The final vehicle is Steve, and with a similar setup to the D Max, he's gonna have to navigate this carefully. Mate, I'm just going to get up this little bump and feed it. Or you could just give it all the berries, and that's exactly what he's done. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Just bellied out hard. <laughs> yeah, Rog. Back her up, have another crack of that. You've, you've taken a fair bit of sand at the front. Don't know if I can move, to be honest. Cool thing about the Gala Ox is there's a fair bit of camaraderie between all the guys here. Everyone wants to get involved. The boys are giving it up for She's got it. She's got this. Ah, right, here we go again. Yeah. There he goes, Steve's on. Get it on, get it on, get it. Oh, it's getting up there, come it on. You've got this, you've got this. Come on. Come on. All right, stop there. Stop there. Can you... <laughs> he's up the first bit, but just like the D-Max, the smaller tyres have let him down a little bit and he's got a bit stuck in the same place Jesse did. When well, yeah, Steve's down to 12 PSI, he's on 18. A lot of people think but when you air down about 18, which is good for most beach conditions, you'll be right. But as you can see, it's just so soft here. Get those puppies down to about 12 PSI, 10, even lower, it doesn't matter. You're not turning too hard. You keep them pretty straight. So that tire's not gonna come off the rim. You're just gonna get heaps of traction. So you're gonna give it another red hot go and you'll watch how much easier it'll make this look. Right on, mate, take it away. Here we go, it's time for sure. Sure enough, it's worked a treat. How much easier that is. Guys, I really can't stress how important it is to get those tyres down. Yes! That's the way! That's the secret right there. Get those tyres down. When you think they're down, go down again. And then when you get to the top, don't celebrate early. <laughs> Two good tips for Nagala. As we left the northern side of Nagala, we bumped into a fella who's running to some mechanical dramas. He mentioned it's only a CV, so he's got his 105 apart and he looks like he's got it under control. So for now, we push north to paradise. Well, what an effort that was. We're through Nagala. I've been through there probably five or six times and I reckon that's the softest I've seen it. But the good news is we're on the north side of Nagala and that means one thing. Sandy Cape is ahead of us. It feels like you're in another world when you get up there. The sand dunes behind you. Fishing offshore is beautiful. So much to catch. So, uh, Without any further ado, let's swim up the beach. The whole vibe of the island changes once you head to the northern shores. It's a sandy desert oasis, constantly barraged by wild winds and home to plenty of the locals too. And it looks like these dingoes are guarding their dinner. How utterly wild is this? It's a pack of dingoes here on what seems to be a dead turtle carcass. These dingoes, they're opportunistic feeders, they're scavengers, they cruise around the beach, look for prime opportunities like this dead turtle here. This sandy cape is a wild place. Get a load of that, Jesse. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, hey? There's something about this sandy cape region. It's just so different from the rest of Fraser. It's just wild country up here. Yeah, it is, though. You turn this corner, it's just colorful water as far as you can see, and those dunes, they're, they're breathtaking. Amazing stuff, mate. One of my favourite four-wheel drive destinations that I've ever been to up here. And I'll never get tired of it. I could come here for the rest of my life, and I reckon if I only had one spot I could choose, <laughs> you wouldn't want to do that to yourself, but I'd choose this place right here. We've got a special request from Tony. One of his favourite things to do with the island is collect some pippies, and I've got to say, one of mine too. And uh, we're going to add a little bit of a feed, a little bit of an entree with that. So I've got a bucket. We um, found a little spot here on low tide. Now's the time to do it. We're gonna be in for a treat if we find a few. What you wanna look for is that, Tony would've done this a million times, but just the little lumps on the sand. I like to go about four inches. No, no, I've gotta keep it realistic, probably about an inch. <laughs> oh. yeah, there's one, there's one, right next to it, yes. Oh, that's a big one. That one, yeah, that's a go. Oh, that's a go. Whoa. So, we just found a whole bunch of pippies. Now, what we're gonna do here is just chuck them, we're gonna clean them up, get all the sand off them, chuck them in a bucket with some salt water. Just as we jump back into the rigs, we get communications back from the bloke in the 105, and it looks like his issues are worse than we originally thought. With conditions as soft as it is at the moment, he's in big trouble, and without help, he could potentially be stuck on the wrong side of Ngala for quite some time. Jesse, this is normally the part we get to Sandy Cape and we do what? 
your couple of beers up in the sand dune and watch the sun go down. Exactly right. Make a few lines out. Lake camp just down there, but today's yeah. gonna be a little bit different. Um, one of the big reasons is we met a bloke and his family that actually broke their 100 series. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna grab that and hopefully tow it back over to Ngala Rock so they can get back to their camp. Um, it is getting late in the afternoon. Yeah. That's and part of your job of being mayor of Ngala <laughs> Rocks, <laughs> isn't it? Mayor of Ngala Rocks. Yeah. Well, um, you can't just leave him there, so we'll go back. And also, there's a bit of a stiff northerly that's gonna get worse over the mm. night. So, the best place to camp in an all elite is down on the down east. There, yeah, you don't want to be coast. here when it's blowing. Absolutely, he's going to come straight through camp. So I think the best thing we can do is go and help that poor bloke in the 105, and then maybe go make camp down at Orchard yeah. Beach. Sounds good. That's a nice Sounds spot. Like a plan. Well, I had to show some of the boys this, mate. That's absolutely stunning up this part of it's the. It's unreal pond. up this end, yeah. No one's ever come up here. Look at that. They're all up on the sand dunes. People taking photos. <laughs> it's going to be hard pressed getting them back in the cars, but um, I think we better do that if you want to make it before dark. Yeah, well, just come across David and he's, um, it's immaculate 105, might I add. But um, problem is he's just done a front diff somewhere on the beach up here, just trying to get back over in Gala Rocks, because it is, it's got a big lift on it and um, very soft sand, of course. So um, the plan is, instead of leaving him over this side, we're gonna try and basically snitch him back over the other side and um, fingers crossed we can, we can tow it. It looks like pretty, it's a pretty heavy rig by the looks of it, mate. Very heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> Travelling back over to Gala is a challenge in its own right, and whilst you don't have the rocks to navigate through, the run up is a lot steeper and just as soft. If we can get the 105 up and over this soft section of sand, he should be right to slowly make his way south under his own steam and find somewhere to repair the vehicle. The plan here is fairly straightforward in theory. We're hooking up my 200 to the steady 200, which will then be hooked up to the 105. Normally just give this a go, just trying to pull a vehicle up with one vehicle, but we're going to use the two probably heaviest and most powerful vehicles in the convoy to basically take this 105 up. Now the reason we're doing that is a really steep sort of entry on this one, so you can't hit it with heaps of momentum. And um, then Liam, of course, is going to be the second one. So once our vehicles are up that first step, we're going to sort of send it. He's going to hit that step at a little bit of pace, but that's going to give us enough momentum to hopefully just get straight up there. Righto, let's give this a whirl, hey? Let's get this 400 series train going. All right, the big thing here is, guys, don't run over the straps, okay? Righto, let's go. Attempt number one has failed and both 200s have gone down right at the start. To make matters worse, the 105, which is in two-wheel drive, is stuck as well. Meaning, we're going to have to call in a third support vehicle. And what you're witnessing here is a 585 series of Land Cruiser trying to get up a bit of sand. I'll tell you what, if I had my patrol here, I'd tow him up first go, but I don't have my patrol here, so we've got to deal with what we got, eh? Here's something you don't see every day. Four Land Cruisers on a snatch. But Tony's managed to get us unstuck and we can line up for attempt number two. I shut the window this time, a heap of sand came in. to clear the bottom corner but as the hill climbs we've gone down again. The problem now is the only real way out of this is forward. Got the max tracks now on Liam and my vehicle. We'll get up, it's gonna pull tension and probably bog down again in probably a car length or two. But just rinse and repeat. We're only gonna get to the top of this hill and it's downhill. Then we should be pretty right. Alright boys you ready? All good mate. This is too much weight and the Max Tracks only got us a foot, maybe two. So it's on to plan B. Well, that's a pretty cool idea, I think. Um, obviously the two big cruisers got stuck on this steep incline, so we've actually driven them on their own steam to get to the top 
So we're gonna be snatching going downhill to make it work between that vehicle and ours. We've got pretty much all the recovery gear and Fraser on. I think there's about seven snatch traps in a row. And um, once they come taut, then we should be on our way downhill and uh, we should have plenty of power then. They don't call it a crazy idea if it works. To make matters more interesting, we're quickly losing light. So fingers crossed this works. All right, you guys ready? Ready, ready. Yes, I think that's great success. Still going, I'm not backing off though. How's that working? Seems like we're getting a fair way. Have a go at that. It absolutely worked and it's epic. <laughs> That's a big recovery. It really is. Yes, yes, yes. Well done, boys. Well done. That was <laughs> pretty big, that one. We're just going to keep going, mate. I'm not stopping until I get to Orchid Beach. <laughs> that is to be one of the most epic recoveries I've done in a long time. The boys are stoked, but we still have to get the rest of the convoy over. Boys, I reckon you need to stay into this one for a while. Oh mate, that was an epic recovery. What do you reckon? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Pretty wild. Big, big effort. We had about every snatch up in the convoy out. Yeah? Yeah. Got it done. And I want to say a big thanks to the boys over here as well. The Nagala These fellas, recovery crew. They were running snatch traps all the way around, uh, max tracks, all the rest of it. Without those boys, you wouldn't have got you out, I don't reckon, in the daylight. We'll get um, one of us to follow you all the way to your campsite, so you make sure you get there tonight. Um, speaking of which, we need to find one ourselves, mate, but all the best. Thank you very much. Too easy, mate. Unreal. Let's get to camp. What a day. It's not often you get into camp after dark on Fraser Island, but sometimes it's just how it is. The good thing is, just south of Ningala, there's plenty of camping spots available. So, not far down the beach, we find a spot that should do us for the night. So Tony was good enough to follow the guys back with the 105 series to make sure they got back to the camp. Now, we've found a campsite in that time and now he's going down the beach trying to find us. So what we can actually do with the GME radio is use the GPX function. So if I just transmit to Tony and say, yeah, mate, we're here, it'll come up on his if we are use the app and see on the GPS exactly where we are so there's no confusion. Hey, Tony, you got a copy, mate? Yeah, sure, mate, loud and clear, mate. Yeah, Ripper, you'll have our uh, location by now, I reckon. Sounds good, mate. The beers are starting to flow. You better come join us. I reckon I'm the man for that job. <laughs> he certainly is. As a little treat for the boys, I want to get those pippies cooked up on Steve's induction setup. We thought we'd whip up a real quick feed tonight, just something really basic. We're gonna basically do a little bit of a pippy cook up. We'll get that going. We've got the old snatch pot straight on induction cooker. That's why we're using Steve's setup here, because it's nice and fast. Pippies now go straight in. I'm gonna grab a handful of parsley. Yeah. We're gonna chuck that straight in. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yes! Look at that, that is open up. What do you do? Beautiful. Don't tell you. That is that's phenomenal. It may not have looked like much last night, but in the morning light, spots like this just never disappoint. The boys are a bit slow to rise this morning, but that's completely understandable because yesterday was a bit of a doozy of a day. While they get their bearings, I'm gonna do a bit of brekkie on the go. Well, the plan today, it's gonna to be another epic day on Fraser. It's pretty hard to go wrong when you're in paradise. But yesterday, of course, we checked the northern part of the island out, and today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We're gonna jump inland. I reckon no trip to Fraser is complete without Going in and checking out some of those hidden gems inland, and there's a few of those I want to show the boys. And because we've got a bit of a southeasterly today, I'm actually going to try and camp on the west coast. It's going to be beautiful camping conditions over there. Some of the best camps, I reckon, on the island. It's really underrated as well. So first, we're going to cook up some bacon and eggs. That's coming along really nicely. 
Get the boys fired up for another big day on the island. Fraser Island is connected by a series of inland roads and beach runs. As previously mentioned, the east coast acts as a sort of highway to get north and south quickly. But while the east coast may have some fantastic Fraser iconic destinations, heading inland towards the west coast will provide you with some spectacular scenery, cool drives and some of the most beautiful lakes you can swim in. But the inland roads can be quite harsh, and with conditions we've seen so far, it could prove to be a challenge just getting anywhere. For now though, we need to pack up the rigs and get on the road south. Not far from camp is our first pit stop, Champagne Pools. It's a must when you're travelling along the eastern beaches. We're heading to Champagne Pools at the moment. Tide is absolutely perfect. Should be some champagne over those rocks, Tony. Yeah, I reckon so, mate. Can't wait, mate. Look at this, stunning. Heck was this, Jesse? Champagne Pools, mate. That's pretty good. The tide's nearly perfect, too. Exactly See a bit right. of water in there. Exactly right. It's a good little tip, actually, for those playing along at home. If you want to make the most of Champagne Pools, obviously come when the sun's out, mm. but make sure you've got at least a half to full tide and um, you'll get that champagne effect as the water crashes over the rocks. But for us, it's a dip I'm, guess, I'm super keen. Champagne Pools is one of the only places you can safely swim on the eastern beaches. While these shorelines get riddled with sharks, the pools are protected by a line of rocks. And if you get in at the right tide, you'll be in for an absolute treat. I was showing the boys around the island and a trip to Fraser just wouldn't be right if we didn't cast the line. So that's exactly what we're doing. Pretty hard when you've got about 30 knots of southeast wind, but there is spots to look. If you look on the lee side of headland, sometimes you can find some water. Maybe you pull a dart or a tailor out of. That's what we're gonna do right now. With the way the wind is blowing, it's not looking like fish is gonna be on the menu tonight, boys. But that's okay, because I've got something else planned to cook up for the fellas tonight. We should be an epic feast. Hey, Justin, got a copy, mate? Sure do, mate. Hey, I thought we were driving down this beach. Probably as good a time as any to ask you a couple of questions. Now, we've been driving on the beach for a couple of days now. I've got sand and salt absolutely everywhere. Can you just give us your top tips, mate, for keeping your pride and joy in one piece and not getting affected by rust too much? Can do, mate. That's what I live for. Before you head on any trip, just keep the underneath clean and then whack some chassis shield on underneath. Just, you know, a day before you go and you're good as gold and no sand, no mud, nothing's gonna to stick to it and you're all gonna be protected under that 200. Justin's chassis shield sprayed on the vehicle means it's gonna be protected from salt water rust. It's a bloody good bit of kit if you ask me to keep your rig from rusting away. Yeah, Roger, save time, work smarter not harder, I get it. Look mate, if it's okay with you, we might get off this beach and jump inland, get out of this wind and there's a few more sights I wanna show the boys. As soon as you turn off the east coast and head inland, the terrain changes almost immediately. The inland tracks provide some very scenic driving, including some ancient, incredible tropic rainforests you won't see anywhere else in the world. But the track is riddled with ruts and hidden tree roots, and the going is quite slow. I've got to say, the Big 200 is absolutely loving it on the beach. The ride is just so comfortable, and that's mainly because I've got the suspension right for the weight of the vehicle. I've got to say, it's the most comfy ride I've ever had in a four-wheel drive. The shocks just absorb every little bump, and on tracks like these inland ones, it's exactly what you need. Liam's pushed the big steady 200 to the absolute limit over the years, which means parts get tired and it doesn't take much for things to go wrong. In this case, things have gone horribly wrong. I heard that, I heard that crack from up there. What's happened here is Liam zigged when he should have zagged and uh, the steering's broken. We've got under there and we thought, not too bad, we've got spare tyres and everything in the back of the car, but it's not actually that. The whole casting of the spindle has snapped in half and the tyre has fallen out. So, yeah, it's a bit of a predicament. We'll uh, get it up on the flat, I reckon, first. Yeah, get it up here. We might be able to do something with a couple of hose clamps, I'm thinking, maybe, but it's not a good spot for it to happen. <sighs> Lots of ruts and side jerking on these inland tracks, too. And so. here I was. I was supposed to plan a weekend where it was basically 
just a leisurely drive in the park. We did a recovery into the darkness last night and something tells me. Um, <laughs> could be the same today. <laughs> <laughs> could be the same today. Might be doing a trackside cook up tonight, yeah. I think. Of all the things to go wrong, Braking your steering is one of the harder problems to fix because without steering on the beach, the vehicle is rendered almost useless. This really is a tough situation because it's actually broken the cast on the back of the hub. And without a bush fix to get this wheel straight again, the Steady 200 isn't going anywhere. Because at the moment it would be a mission to even tow it out of here. You yeah, to, it'd be... It's just, the yeah. steering's one of those things where once that goes, it's just all done. You need like you at least it, a temporary fix to get... You need a, some sort of fix because you can't even tow it now. You, you'd be better off doing a transmission or an engine if you wanted to get a car out of the yeah. bush. But that one, I've never seen that before. There's only one thing to do, and that's to get the tyre off and get cracking on a fix. We've got the wheel off, taken the disc off just so we've got access, bent this guard back for now. I'm gonna try and stick some hose clamps around there. Well, it's a bit of a long shot, but I've managed to saw some hose clamps from the back of the 200. Our thinking is if we can put enough hose clamps around it to secure it, we should be able to hold the steering just enough to nurse it out of the inland tracks. Well, that's looking, it looks pretty good really, all considered, I think this might be the ticket. That should be just enough to hold that steering arm together. We'll get the wheel on and hopefully, I mean, it works. But it might actually change where we decide to camp tonight because mm. we are about not, e not even a sixth into the inland track to get onto the, the west coast. So what are you trying to say is we'll be camping on the west coast and land will be over east somewhere? Might be a bit lonely in <laughs> No, I don't know. I'm thinking we might need another plan, but yeah. let's just see if this works first before we get too excited. Get too excited, and yeah. See what happens, eh? How's it feeling, Liam? It's feeling pretty strong, actually. Hopefully it holds up. Oh yeah, there you are. There you are. Back in convoy. We've done some pretty wild bush mechanic fixes in our time, and I reckon I can add this one to the list. As is the case with four-wheel driving, your plans can dramatically change, especially when you've got a breakage. Now, what we've fixed Liam's vehicle, it's driving out on its own steam, which is nothing short of a miracle. It's probably smartest that we go back to the east coast because if we go a 50k round trip, you, anything could happen to that vehicle. So I think the best solution right, is to get a campsite. Um, all the boys can have a couple of beers. I'll do a bit of a cook up. We'll get the moods lifted. And sometimes our best ideas come around a campsite. It's always a plan B when it comes to Fraser. And um, I guarantee this one, we're gonna have a good time no matter which way we go. With the day almost at an end and the breakage taking up most of our afternoon, we've managed to limp the 200 back out and found a nice spot to pull up stumps. It's not the West Coast camp we've been dreaming of, but then again, you'll never hear me complain about a campsite on Fraser Island because they're all pretty darn specky. Hey. Cheers, mate. Heavy. Open a beer. It's, there not you the, go. it's not the camp we wanted to crack the beers at, but it's still a camp. You know what? These are some of my favourite camps. Mm. I'm not going to lie to you. Look, the wind is a bit solid tonight. That's why we wanted to go to the west coast, but um, obviously Liam had other plans. He loved it, it is, so yeah. much on the east coast. He just, just wanted to stay over here, I right? Get, I sort of get it. It's nice, yeah. down, it's nice down here, but yeah. look, I think a couple of beers. We'll figure out how to fix that properly. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm surprised it drove, what, 10 kilometres? Maybe yeah. 20? Well, it was fixed by two pretty good mechanics, you well, know. Yeah, so no, we just used... More faith. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the steel version of a cable tie. Yeah, pretty couple, much. A couple of hose clamps, but yeah. um, look, that worked. Sometimes you've got to think out the box a bit, I suppose. Mm. And speaking of thinking out the box, mate, oh, I'm going to have to do that for tonight's recipe because I have You're a bit cooking, of a, are you? Well, I cert, mate. <laughs> I've got to bring the moods up somehow around yep. here. So I'm thinking I'm going to cook something that's... Uh, it'll blow your hair back, mate. Yeah, <laughs> a bit, bit of chilli involved, probably. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry about it, mate. <laughs> Well, how good's this little campsite? Except for the fact it's blowing about 30 knots, I need to do something very special to keep the mood really high. So I'm thinking Megala noodles. You gave me one job today, I'll tell you not to forget the eggs, so I brought them. Did you? We can't forget them now. That's right, and that's the other little piece I actually forgot about. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I forgot about. Oh, that's we're why you're passing the jobs. We're doing a little omelette as well. So we're doing oh. like a bit of Nagala noodles. You ever had that before? Never. First well, time for everything, I guess. This is a meal I grew up with as a young bloke. Ah, it's, it's one of those ones. One of mum's recipes. When mum doesn't want to cook, 
You, you know those nights? Yeah. This is pretty good if your mum didn't want to cook. I think we had toasted sandwiches yeah. in that. Yeah. Yeah. Veggie one on yeah, toast my or mum was a bit of a nut when it comes to cooking. She loved cooking. I'm basically doing onion, garlic, a little bit of ginger and some chilli. It's blowing so hard on Fraser at the moment, you may as well keep the seeds in. We'll get the guys nice and heated up from the inside out, I reckon is, a good, <laughs> is the go. Couple of capsicum, mate. Chop them up. Yeah, take the calls out of those. Yep. We're gonna chop those little dudes up and I'm gonna grab some mushrooms out of the medic and then we're gonna start cooking things up. Look at you, you go, mate. Do you want a bigger knife? Oh, it would be good, but I wouldn't show <laughs> if I was qualified. I thought this is my apprentice knife. <laughs> Chuck this one on. So, this, look at this. It's a bit this, flash this, for this, me. This is quite amazing. I'll just turn it on now. And now we just basically turn the power on and straight away. Oh, it's humming. As soon as you turn that on, we've got instant heat. When you've got this much wind coming through yeah. camp at the moment, listen to that. The second I put that in, that's how hot we're talking about, straight away. Look at the chilli and oh, the colours and the smells. Oh, it does get hot quick in the bottom, doesn't it? It does, you've got to keep turning those yeah. around. Some mushrooms. Some mushies. Yeah, chocolate mushies in. When you're on Fraser Island especially, there are dingoes. You've got to be dingo safe, that means just like the guys in the US with the bears, mate, you've got to put all your food scraps away and make sure there's no food out or else the dingoes definitely will be here tonight. We've seen a lot on the island at the moment. Not How come you've been putting all that stuff under Tony's swag though? Only the protein stuff. So when you oh, get, okay. if you're eating yep. chops and stuff and you get the bone, yeah. you, you ideally chuck it under your mate's swag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that you makes don't, sense. You don't do that. I reckon bacon is one of those staples in, when you're camping a fair bit. Going got, camping without bacon is like going full drive without a snatch strap. Exactly right. I want that bacon to start to sizzle. Now whack that right in. Is this all meant to fit in the one pot at the end? Yeah. It's going to be chocolate. It's going to be super, super <laughs> full. So while you're doing that. Get onto the omelet. I'm going to get onto the omelet, mate. We've got to basically just do six quick eggs in here. Nothing crazy. I'll just give those just a little whisk up. Pretty good at that wrist movement there, mate. Oh. I'm all right hand I am at least. <laughs> Many years of whisking eggs, mate. That's all I, I thought it was just reeling in fish, mate. <laughs> yeah, oh, that too. Must be getting pretty close, yeah, I reckon. It's say, pretty mate, warm in there. You can take that off, probably. Take that off? Yeah, take that off. Now, check this out. This is wild. I've still got 78% battery. I'm running 95 amps at the moment. Wow. That's yeah. impressive. That's yeah. really impressive. It really is. So we're going to set this aside for just that a little bit. That looks good and smells good, too. It, it really does. So, got some chicken thigh. Nothing too mad here, mate. We're just going to... Dice it up a bit? Yeah, we're just going to do some strips. I'm just going to point out one little thing, mate, if mm -hmm. that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, just recently, you and I have been in the Glasshouse Mountains, yeah. and, and I'm going to say right here and now, you are the mayor of the Glasshouse. When you come to Fraser Island, I'll tell you yeah, what. Yeah, I'm out of your depth here. <laughs> here this is the Fraser man, that's why I'm with him now. <laughs> I've never seen you stuck before, and you've been, you've been stuck a few times. <laughs> I know what's coming now. <laughs> then go yeah. on the rocks. There's 400 people watching. The poor boy get, <laughs> gets stuck in front of but everyone. Not only once, I probably got stuck about five <laughs> times. You come to the beach and that's gonna happen sometimes, no I matter what. I had to what. massage all the boys' feet that night because they had the burnt feet recovering <laughs> me. Reckon this is pretty much done that's in here. That's done. Well, I'm just finished chopping that up. Most oh yeah, that is done. That's done. I'm gonna chuck this straight in, into the pot here. Let's get that going. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil with this one. A little bit of Chinese five spice as well on the chicken. Basic. Chinese omelette, nothing too crazy. So chicken can go on top of this, mate. Just grab the chicken out. You can grab any noodles you want, mate. I just went for the basic two minute noodles. That's boiling up an absolute storm at the moment. Whack that lid on. Now, normally we struggle every time we try and drain the water off noodles. Or... No more struggling. No, nah, exactly right. You know you know where I'm getting at. I'm just gonna go around near Tony's swag and dump. Yeah, good idea. All of this water. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh. <laughs> what, are, what are those sampling tonight? It's like a chicken flavoured noodle. Oh, that's nice. That, I, I hear dogs really like that flavour. Who needs enemies when you got mates, eh? Yeah, that is it, mate. And look at that. Noodles are done and they've been strained as well. We're just going to chuck in everything else. Look at that. You that, scrape that out. That's actually the perfect size pot. Mm. And there, there is so much food here, folks. Now, the last little ingredient is a, a little bit of soy oh, sauce. Soy sauce, yeah. Boys, bring your plates in. We are on, look at this. This is looking so good, guys. Boys, wrap your laughing gear around this one. That is good. How good is that? On a yeah. cold night, that is actually unreal. And it's super easy to make. Anyone can do this one. Now, tomorrow, we've got a bit of a plan. Get up to the Driftwood Bar at Orchid Beach. Now, we've got a bunch of guys meeting us up there. We put a bit of a call out on Instagram for anyone to come and have a beer with us. I don't know who's gonna come, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. There's no doubt about that. But for now, I reckon we sit down, enjoy this. There's seconds as well, so don't, yeah, well, some of you guys are nearly finished. You? Yeah, you sorted it out, Justin. Or you can sit around and enjoy that one. How good is this one, eh? It's Yum. So it's so good. It's so good. Well, 
it's been a bumpy couple of days on Fraser so far, but the boys are still stoked as ever, because you can never have a bad time with your mates on Fraser. Today's goal is simple. I'm going to show the boys some of Fraser's iconic spots we haven't hit up yet, not to mention a few spots you might not have known existed on Fraser. Then we need to point our noses up to Orchid Beach because we put a little call out for some of you folks to come and meet us at the pub up there, which we can't wait for. We've decided to leave the Steady 200 parked up on the east coast and Liam's jumped in with me for today. There you go, mate. 200 series take two. Oh, look. <laughs> Luckily, it's a pretty familiar vehicle for him and always nice to have a bit of company on the road. Eli Creek Crossing is renowned for swallowing vehicles. It's a freshwater creek that meets the ocean on the eastern beach. On low tide, it's a pretty simple crossing, but when the tides are high like this, it's really easy to be caught off guard. And well, salt water and vehicles don't mix. Well, tides are a little bit big because we've got big seas at the moment, and it's probably the, the cutoff point, the last moment you'd want to do this creek crossing down here at Eli. Fair bit of water over. The key is to try and time it. Obviously, just watch a couple of sets of waves. There's always a couple of big waves, and then you'll see when the right time is. At the moment, there's just waves flooding in, so I've got to wait for all that water to try and go out. And the key with this sort of stuff, there is a bit of salt water, of course, mixed with this fresh water, is to go as slow as possible. The slower you can go, the less flick you're going to get with all the salt water. But there's no avoiding it sometimes, just trying to minimise the amount of salt you get in your car. You don't want to ruin that. We sort of need to hurry up a little bit. Yeah, hopefully nothing catches it out. This one is breaking now. Yeah. Is this a deep part? Yeah, yeah it's just, it's just coming in. So oh, pretty darn good if you ask me. Perfectly. It's just hit the wheels now. Oof. There's that wave right behind us. Okay. That was time to perfection. We wouldn't have been it. Probably gonna muck around too much longer in there. The first two vehicles are through relatively easy, but the waves are picking up. So it's gonna prove tricky for the rest of the boys if they don't time this one right. Any later, and I don't think that would be crossable. It's a good reminder to always check the tides before you go to Fraser, and always be aware of what they're doing on any given day. It could mean the difference between a good trip and a disaster. Of course, with any risk, there is a reward, and just on the other side of the crossing is Eli Creek itself. A stunning little swimming spot, and we just couldn't pass up a quick opportunity to take a dip. Well, the tides are a bit high today, so we decided to make the most of a bad situation and go to Eli Creek. I haven't actually been here in years, and as you can see, it's absolutely delightful. Nice way to wash the salt off, go for a quick dip, wait the tide out, and then we'll continue further down south on the beach. How good is this? Eli Creek. Just float your way down. Beautiful fresh water. It doesn't get much better than this. Now, I would have loved to hang around there all day, but we are on a mission today, so there isn't any hanging around. It's not long before we're back onto the inland track and heading through the heart of Fraser's rainforest. How stunning is this? How's the scenery change, mate? Oh, it's beautiful. It's you can feel the temperatures uh, a bit cooler in here, nice shade. It's beautiful when you start seeing all these palm trees and old growth forest. It's so cool about Fraser, it just changes the scenery. It almost feels like a dinosaur is going to pop out. Yeah. Hey Jesse, get a load of this rainforest mate. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how this island just totally changes a couple of k's inland. Hey, it's, it's bloody beautiful. You'd think you'd be in Cairns or something looking at this rainforest. There's also lots of elevation inland. We've been going up and down a lot. I just thought it was a big flat island. And it's crazy to think that it's all sand as well. It's the big sand island, the, in fact the biggest in the world. It's crazy to think there's a lot of sand on this place. After a couple of hours of slow going on the inland tracks, we get to a destination I haven't visited in a couple of years. An abandoned logging camp tucked away in the centre of the island. A lot of you guys probably don't even realise there's an old logging camp or military base in the middle of Fraser Island. But in my opinion, it really is worth exploring some of these inland tracks because you never know what you're going to find. This is Poston's logging camp. Now, it's really cool if you get a chance to come and check it out for yourself. It's a little slice of Fraser Island history. There's so much history on this island. It operated between 1935 to 1991 when they actually ceased logging on the island, made it a wealth heritage area. And basically, 
I can only assume that it was too expensive to get all the gear off the island, so they've basically just left it where it stood. And there's a whole camp here. There's little dongers and houses up the back here. There's all the old machinery here. And um, it's just really cool to walk around and just see these uh, old bits of machinery and all the old history of Fraser Island. Because a lot of people didn't even realize that they used to log significantly here and then take all the timber via Harvey Bay and down through river heads and down into Maryborough. And, um, it's just got a rich history, this place. And if you ever get a chance, come and check it out for yourself and have a little walk around. Unfortunately, there's no 200s here, Liam, so you're square out of luck for that part. All jokes aside, Liam has managed to get a mate who's got a part inbound. For us though, this marks the penultimate stop on our Fraser Island tour. But as always, we leave the best to last. And sure enough, right on beer o'clock, we arrive at the Driftwood Bar at Orchid Beach, where a bunch of you folks have come to meet us. <laughs> what a turnout. It's amazing to see so many people come so far just to say g'day and have a beer. You know, we have a lot of fun doing what we do, but to see so many families coming up to Gari and having the time of their life on holidays is just something we won't forget in a long time. Well, how good is this? We've come down to Fraser Island with the boys. We've had one of those trips, I reckon, it's gonna go down in the history books. We've had breakages, we've had epic recoveries, and of course, some of the best champagne camping you'll ever do anywhere in the world. Jesse, it's been a absolute it's been good. It really didn't go to plan, but we made the most of it. That's what Fraser is all about, in fact, full driving as a whole. Mm. And I'll say this time and time again, but Fraser is, without a doubt, my favourite place in the world to full drive and camp. Who here agrees with that? <laughs> I, I think it's unanimous, folks. <laughs> if you haven't booked your trip to Fraser Island, do yourself a favour, book it right now, because this is a great place. We're down at the Driftwood, Hotel right now at the top of Fraser, Orchid Beach. You haven't been there. That's that's where the adventure the begins, be. if you ask me. Where's your yeah. favourite spot in Fraser? Oh, it's got to be Nagala Rocks. I'm pretty good at it now. Nagala. <laughs> Jesse decided to park up there for about three and a half hours. <laughs> you, you guys are going to see that pretty soon. But um, ripper of a trip. Well, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on. <laughs> see you around. <laughs>